This is One on One. Dr. Wu's Guide to Teens and Sex Today. This is not an easy decision, deciding when to have sex for the first time. There are so many pleasures from, from movies, from friends, from our own bodies. If you have a pot of boiling water and you try to hold that lid down, if you let go for even a second, that lid is going to burst off because of the pressure. On the kibbutz, my top popped. <laughs> Man, you are good. Deborah Jo Rupp, who is uh, an actor <laughs> in uh, Becoming Dr. Ruth at the West Side Theater. How yes. are you? I'm good. You are I'm very good. good. Well, you just saw the little little clip there, but You're even better, you have right? to come to the show. You have I, to come to the I show. I will come to the okay, show. Okay, do you promise? I promise. There are some shows okay. I actually say I'm not going to, but this one I will. <laughs> Why should people come to see this? Because it is not what you expect. It is not... Um, it, it is not what you expect. People that come and think that it's like a little sex show or people that come and think it's about the Holocaust, uh, people that come and think it's about her sniper days, it is, it is all of this and none of this. You know, the show is different, just very different. You will laugh and you will cry, and I truly Why mean cry? that. Why cry? Oh, there's some sad stuff. Dr. Ruth, sad? Well, there was some sad stuff. I promise I will make you cry. And laugh. I will get you. And laugh? And laugh, yeah. And a little bit about Dr. Ruth's history that will help people better understand this. Um, she, is, she is, in every sense of the word, a survivor. Mm -hmm. She lost her entire family in the Holocaust. She was an orphan? Yeah, she doesn't know what happened to them. They, Hitler basically took her father and and then took her family. She was part of the kinder transport, right. one of 300 children to go to Switzerland. And that was the only country that she, if, if those 300 children, um, four countries took 300 children. If she had gone to any other country, she would not be alive. It was only Switzerland. And she went to Switzerland because she was Orthodox Jew. And she went mm. to an Orthodox Jewish orphanage. Right. And so that's how she got to go there. And she, she was able to go because her father was in basically a concentration camp. So How'd you she get got this on. Role? Um, it was kind of written for me. Uh, Mark St. Germain, I know. Written for you. Yeah. Um, he had been looking for a while to write. He likes to write, you know, historical figures and whatever. And, and then he landed on one that was alive, and she was short. And she had a dialect that's not one country, it's four. And he went, I bet Deborah Jo could do that. <laughs> Because you can do all me. kinds of things. Because I've seen you in so many I'm, different... I'm being really facetious. No, 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 no. Let folks know where else they've seen you. Um, you have seen me on Friends. You've seen me on Seinfeld. The 70 shows. 70 show, show for eight years. Yeah. The that, mom. That, that's, that's, that's cool. It was cool, yeah. yeah. And it came at a great time in my life. You know, retirement. <laughs> Come on, what I, do you mean? Well, I look ahead. I built a house in Massachusetts, and I said, I want every hallway big enough for a wheelchair. I look <laughs> ahead. I'm so prepared, so prepared. So that was, OK, I got it. Got um, it. When did, by the way, you grew up right outside of Boston. Uh, north of Boston. North, 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 yeah. Close to New Hampshire. I yes, learned that before I did. we got on here. Yeah. Um, you knew at a very young age you wanted to do this kind of work. Yes. But you said when you got into this, you, you moved to New York, um, a few years back, and yeah. when you got just here, just a couple years back, just a couple years back, um, I came you... right out of college, and um, I, I didn't have any money. My mother made me promise never to be a waitress because she thought I would be seduced by the money. The money of being a waitress? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's my mother, and so she taught me sort of how to be a bookkeeper because that's what she was. And you were Which, a good book bookkeeper. I was very good because I could. I was really good on the adding machine. They were not calculators then. Right. They were adding machines with the tape, the tape thing. That's how old I am. Um, no, okay. But I was really good at it because every form that you fill out, if you turn it over, there's directions. Really, if you can punch buttons and you can read, 
But you're very good at that, but you're even Let's better. As a, my producers are saying, go back to Ruth. They, they, I, I was fascinated by that, and I'm sure others are as well. But let me ask you. Yeah. What you love about playing this role is? Is the journey I get to take an audience on. That's what I love about it. And every audience is different. Every, so every show is different. Every, every single, show? Every single show is different. Every single show, yeah. She's... Not a big crier, because she says that, you know, she says, I'm a yucca. I'm a, you a know, yucca. a yucca, a German Jew. Yuccas don't cry. They keep their emotions here. Um, but every once in a while, I do, because it's 97 minutes of but just you alone, me. isn't it? Yeah, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, the Holocaust is addressed. The death of her husband is addressed. There are some very serious moments. But every audience is different, so I cry at a different point, depending on what I feel the audience is feeling. It's very fun. It's very fun. Um, and it's what keeps it alive, because it is different. It's and the audience different. reacts to different parts of this 97 minute yeah, one in very woman different ways. Play, in different Some people come and they want to laugh. That's all they want to do. They want to laugh and 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 I know right away. I know in 10 minutes what I'm dealing with. And the ones that want to come and laugh, that's what they do. And there is enough and it becomes then it becomes like a comedy. There are some people that want to think and want to be more introspective and then the show becomes something else and every show is different and sometimes it's a combo. And you're reading that audience constantly. I talk directly to the audience well, for the entire mean, time. Well, what do you mean? Can you even see, do you look? I see the faces. So when you're in the audience and you're texting, I see you. No, you do not. I see you and I see your light. And sometimes I stop the show. What? No, no, no. I do, I do, I do. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You say. I say, I see you with the texting. You think I don't see you? <laughs> T turn your cell phones off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you probably do it just like that. I do do it like and that. And and the 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 accent. Describe it. The accent is uh, German, French, Israeli, American. Four countries smushed together. I had a dialect coach. I cried when I tried to learn it. It took forever, forever. And everybody has their idea of what she sounds like. Like in their heads. Everyone has a different idea. It's just one voice. You know what she sounds like, I right? I think I know. Oh, see. And I do too, but I guarantee you, mine is not yours. It's four countries. So there's probably a part of you that is picking out one country more than another, and everybody does that, you know? It's, it's I do how I hear her. So let me ask you this, for someone who is in that audience, who is, let's just say someone who is older, who has a connection to the Holocaust, who was a German Jew. Yes. There's a potential that they receive this and hear it. Yes. And experience it, not just the accent, but the whole thing, and it totally. In a very different way. And the way it's written, it's very personal. It's very personal. And um, because it's so personal, it's you feel it. You really feel it as an audience member. You feel it. And we're getting a lot of young people in the audience now, and I, kind of think the story is getting lost a little bit. I, I What do you mean by that? Uh, I don't, I think the Holocaust and what happened and how it happened, I think is maybe not as prevalent in schools as it was when I went. I think it's getting lost a little bit. And I think this show brings it back in a very personal way, in a way that you can identify with. You know what's so interesting is you're talking about, uh, about Dr. Ruth. Is, I mean, I met her a couple times in, in different shows, different places. Um, I, there were times I thought people didn't take her seriously. I know. And that I didn't know her well enough. It was at another network another time we were waiting to go on. And people thought she was a joke. Some people. A, a lot of people. And I think... When, when I got the call to play Dr. Ruth, the first thing I thought of was the little short woman with the, that talked funny, had a high voice, and talked about sex all the time. Yes. And it was a joke to me. I, I, I didn't know anything about her. I didn't even know, I wasn't even sure if she wasn't maybe an actress that made up a funny accent. Doing shtick. Yeah. 
that's how that's what I knew. And then when I was told that she was a sniper, I couldn't put those two Whoa, keep together. Saying sniper. She put was that a sniper in. in Palestine. She was in the Haganah. Um, and she she got hit, you know, a bomb. She was part of the underground army. Yeah. Dr. I Ruth. know. Dr. Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Ruth. Her story is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. All true. All true. All true. Nothing she funny. sailed from Paris to New York Harbor to get to the United States. The Germans, she got a check from them um, for not having schooling because the Nazis didn't let her get the schooling. She got a check from, and then she came to the United States. She, she was a single mother. She, she's amazing. Really? And people should know what she is. Yeah, you she's feel amazing. Connected to her. I do. Very connected. Very connected. <laughs> And, and in many ways, for so many people, I bet they're walking away from this play with a sense of her that they never would have it's had. It's exactly otherwise. what it is. It's exactly what it is. And that's moving to you. Yeah. It is. Um, I don't want you to get emotional on me. <laughs> don't. Um, actually, a very brave woman, mm -hmm. really, in a lot of ways. This is a gift for you to be able to play this role. Yeah. And you're giving a give back in so many ways. I hope so. Yeah. Um, in the time we have left, I want to ask you, when you think about work, the work that we do, I have a minute left, do you think, to, people say, oh, I'm just so glad I'm a working actor. But there's work, and then there's work that's really very rewarding. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be working, getting a check, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But for your career at this point, this isn't just work. No, this is a message. I get to, I get to deliver a message. I get to deliver hope. You know, I get to change your life for 97 minutes, you know? That's just not work. That's not work, no. That's a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I plug a little bit? No. You don't? You don't. <laughs> I don't mind That's okay at all. okay with you? Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> Deborah Jo Rupp is uh, Dr. Ruth in Becoming Dr. Ruth at the West Side Theater, which is... Where is it? It's on 43rd, 43rd and 9th. 43rd and 9th. By the way, you live right around the corner. I do. I'm not going to give you your address, but by the way, you're a delight. And thank, I you thank you very you so much. One-on-one on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Cone Resnick, and by PSE&G. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by Celgene.